Welcome, dear viewers. You must already know about the major changes happening in China, which is gradually transforming into a global superpower. Its economy is expanding rapidly, dominating markets and industries worldwide. The government is managing massive projects to provide the country with enormous infrastructure like never before, meeting the needs of its population and ensuring them comfort and an easier life. And how United States of America learned from these projects today, China is working on building a giant undersea tunnel which will become the longest in the world. Stay with us in this video to learn about this incredible tunnel being constructed under the sea, where the most skilled and professional Chinese engineers have been called to carry out this huge project. Before we begin, friends, we invite you to subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated with everything we share regularly. Now let's discover Qingdao, a coastal city in China that recently ranked third among the country's strongest economic cities. The long undersea tunnel will be built right beneath the water surrounding this city, and soon this tunnel will become the longest undersea highway in the world. But this project is not the first of its kind. Years ago, the Zhaozhou Bay Bridge and Tunnel was designed, considered the longest structure in the world that combines both a bridge and an undersea tunnel. Today, China is once again trying to break the record it set for itself. The city of Qingdao overlooks Zhaozhou Bay, which was once just an ordinary water basin. Around 11,000 years ago, the water level rose and submerged the basin, turning the area into a small bay, as shown on today's maps. This geographical change was later used to build a port on the bay's coast, now the fourth largest port in the world. The port is considered the beating heart of Qingdao, with the old city located on its eastern side and the modern city with its new buildings on the western side. Traveling from east to west once took a full hour by regular boats, but with the construction of the highway between the two sides, the trip was reduced to 50 minutes. By 2000, 2011, things changed drastically with the completion of the Zhaozhou Bridge and Tunnel, allowing people to cross the bay in just six minutes. Thus, the free trade zone, the economic development zone, and the main port centers were all moved to the western part of the city. The Qingdao International Festival also began to be held on the western side, and traffic within the bay increased, with around 100,000 cars crossing the highway each day from one side of the bay to the other. This made the construction of a new undersea passage within the bay necessary, serving both practical and tourism purposes. Watch the construction process of the second tunnel in Zhaozhou Bay, where workers face many challenges challenges and difficulties to complete their tasks in the best way possible. The tunnel is 14.37 kilometers long, with six two-way lanes, and reaches a depth of 115 meters below sea level. One side of the tunnel consists of granite rock, while the other side is made up of limestone and sandy layers. There are 22 geological faults beneath the tunnel, the largest of which is about 200 meters long, separating the plains in the west from the mountains in the east. Today, the tunnel is being excavated using explosives. To create an opening in the rocks, there is another method that uses a tunnel boring machine, which penetrates and breaks the rock with a circular blade to crush the soil instead of blasting it. However, this method is very costly and harmful to the environment, so it is not used by workers in the granite section of the tunnel, especially since their work site is located hundreds of meters beneath the water. Using this machine would damage marine life and the seabed of the bay, which provides food for sea creatures. Therefore, blasting and reinforcement techniques are used to prepare the granite section of the tunnel. First, the rocks are reinforced to prevent collapse, then the rocks along the tunnel path are removed using explosives. Dynamite charges are placed in carefully designated holes, with engineers thoroughly studying their locations before setting them off. The rock layers are reinforced with three layers of concrete, then filled with another waterproofing layer to prevent leakage. With this, the tunnel becomes ready for improvement and beautification before its official opening to the public. On the other hand, these tunnels face another risk. Cracking can occur due to the presence of natural faults in the rock layers, and water may seep inside, causing flooding within the tunnel and potentially destroying it completely. For this reason, radar detection devices are installed to monitor the rocks. These devices identify the locations of voids, which are later injected with cement to prevent collapse. The cement layers strengthen the tunnel's structure and prevent water leakage. As for the softer limestone sections of rock, tunnel boring and reinforcement techniques are used. A massive machine with a diameter of up to 8 meters is employed for this task. It carefully grinds the rocks into muddy sand. The machine then pumps a layer of cement over the crushed rocks, coating them evenly and systematically. Once its job is complete, the machine is dismantled and reassembled to prepare the final layer of the tunnel before it becomes fully ready. 
At this point, some important questions may come to mind. How are the exhaust gases from car engines vented out of the tunnel? And how do they deal with accidents if they occur inside this deep tunnel? For this reason, a so-called service tunnel is designed alongside the main road. This tunnel is not meant for vehicle traffic, but it contains other essential elements related to the main tunnel, such as maintenance equipment, ventilation pipes, and emergency exits. Most importantly, how is the tunnel ventilated? In reality, there is a 30 meter long chamber beneath the undersea tunnel that houses the tunnel boring machine we talked about earlier. This chamber functions as a central hub for ventilation, allowing oxygen to flow inside the tunnel. Similarly, the service tunnel acts as a channel to supply fresh air and absorb carbon dioxide and other gases. Therefore, we can say that this project is not just a single tunnel, but actually two tunnels built on top of each other. This tunnel will open to the public at the end of 2027, ensuring smooth and efficient traffic flow without affecting marine life or underwater movement. The ships pass over the tunnel, and with this, China will prove to the world that massive and successful projects don't need to harm the environment or damage our planet. Qingdao could become one of the most important commercial cities in China, and this tunnel may open the door to utilizing sea routes through the straits along the city's coasts, such as the Qiangzhou Strait, the Bohai Strait, and the Taiwan Strait. These straits could transform into important trade and political routes. With the advancement of modern construction technologies, it is no longer difficult to travel from one city to another, or even from one continent to another. So, what do you think of these massive projects that China is working on? Do you believe they will be economically beneficial? And in the last, the United States of America, with its vast resources and advanced technology, has long been a leader in infrastructure and innovation. Yet in recent decades, many of its projects have faced delays, cost overruns, and political deadlock. China's undersea tunnel offers a lesson that the U.S. can learn from. The importance of long-term planning, consistent investment and a unified national vision. While the U.S. has built impressive structures like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Hoover Dam in the past, many of its roads, bridges, and rail systems are now aging. By studying China's large-scale projects, the U.S. can adopt more efficient construction methods, strengthen public-private partnerships, and invest boldly in infrastructure that not only connects cities but also redefines global trade routes. Furthermore, the U.S. can take inspiration from China's balance between development and environmental sustainability by employing cutting-edge technology to minimize ecological damage while expanding infrastructure, America could modernize its own transport and energy systems without harming its natural resources. Share your opinions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed the content. Thank you for watching and stay safe.